This is the book Beat Depression by David Hines from 2001. Uh, this is chapter 10 called Losing in Love. There are two tragedies in life. One is to lose your heart's desire. The other is to gain it. George Bernard Shaw, 1856 to 1950. Man and Superman. The bottom line, life can be a bitch, but tomorrow may be a peach. Losing in love hurts like hell and is almost guaranteed to induce anger, depression, and despair. You may feel that you will never love or be loved again. You will, of course, but you cannot be expected to believe this for a while yet. The overwhelming sense of shock, outrage, disbelief, and heart-rending grief at losing your lover defies all rational thoughts. It shatters the very bedrock of your emotions. This experience will humble us and we must learn to accept that it will take a while before we can get back on top and start living again. We are emotionally damaged and just as if we had met with an accident and were physically wounded, it will take time for the healing process to take effect. In the meantime, we must take care of ourselves because we are fragile. We need special treats and plenty of sleep. In fact, we need and deserve an army of helpers. The time has come to be supported by our friends, who are so important they merit a chapter of their own later in this book. Don't feel bad because you need your friends to help you now as never before. What are friends for? They are not only there to share the good times with you, as your real friends will be delighted to demonstrate. Just remember how good you felt the last time you needed someone, and uh, just remember how good you felt the last time you helped someone in need. <clears throat> Surely you would encourage your friends to call on you if they were suffering as you are now. I, for one, am not too proud to admit that my closest and most treasured friends have seen me and comforted me in the depths of my despair. Having been ravaged by two strokes and very badly treated by a woman, I think even she would agree with that. I believe that we benefit more from the painful experiences of life than we do from the periods of ecstasy. I was hurting as you are hurting now, and despite the apparent impossibility at the time, I have found the woman of my dreams, and we are supremely happy. You will learn much about beating depression and overcoming the trials of life in this book. No matter how unlikely the prospect of future love and happiness might seem to you right now, I would expect you to be in a position to pursue... Um, Say that again, I would expect you to be in a position to surprise yourself before too long. In the meantime, since you're hurting so much already, I have no qualms about introducing you to yet more pain aversion therapy in the form of a rubber band to be worn around the wrist at all times, day and night. Make no mistake, use correctly the humble, rum, the humble rubber band is one of the big guns of stress management when it comes to getting absent lovers out of your life forevermore. Make sure it fits loosely enough not to restrict circulation, but snugly enough so it won't fall off. Every time you think of your ex, snap the rubber band. Snap it firmly so that it stings, but not hard enough to leave welts on your wrist. This type of aversion therapy might seem crazy, but it works. How does it work? Your subconscious mind quickly comes to associate the twang of pain from the rubber band with thoughts of the offending ex-lover. Your subconscious mind will, over time, short-circuit the thought process to avoid the pain. Thoughts of your ex become less and less frequent, and soon it will be time to cast off the rubber band and celebrate your newfound freedom with champagne and friends.